now that we've taken a look at, uh, at the first few ways that the pitcher could commit an action that would be considered a balk, let's go now and, and let's take a look at a few more. So the first one we can look at uh, now is that the pitcher, without, when he does not have the ball, he stands on or astride the pitcher's rubber or, or he's off the rubber and he fakes a pitch. So the pitcher fakes a pitch without holding the ball. And so maybe this would, would pop up uh, if a team attempts to uh, pull off what is called the hidden ball trick where a, a player other than the pitcher would have the ball maybe if there's a runner on first base uh, the the first baseman somehow would, would get the ball rather than the pitcher and, and so the pitcher he, he's they're allowed to this is a legal play but he cannot do things like go so far as to to get up on the mound and, and, and to actually fake a pitch the next way is that after coming to a legal pitching position, uh, the, the pitcher takes a, one hand away from the ball other than obviously in, in, in making the pitch or, or throwing to a base. So after coming to a legal pitching position, the pitcher removes one hand from the ball. And so this is just a, a way, uh, so you'll recall that during the video where we looked at uh, pitching delivery, the pitcher has to keep his, his the, the ball, he has to hold it in both hands. And so this is basically just saying that he has to continue to hold it in both hands until he actually delivers the pitch. The next way is that uh, while he's on the rubber, the pitcher either accidentally or intentionally drops the ball. So while on the rubber, the pitcher drops the ball. And it's really uh, meaningless whether it was his intent or not. Uh, if he drops the ball, it's, it's, it's a balk. The next way is that if the pitcher makes an illegal pitch, pitcher makes an illegal pitch. So again, we've looked at uh, what a pitcher must do in his windup in order for it to be legal. And so if he were to uh, not follow one of those rules, uh, then, then he would be making an illegal pitch, and, and if there are runners on base, then it would be considered a balk. The next way is probably something you'll never see, and that is that uh, the pitcher delivers the ball to the batter while he is not facing the batter. So, the pitcher delivers ball to the batter while he's not facing the batter. So uh, as I said, this is probably a, a, a rare situation, but, but it's just something to, to put in there that, that the uh, pitcher would not be, for example, he would not be allowed to be, uh, if there's a, a runner on second base, the pitcher wouldn't be allowed to, to be looking at the second base, uh, looking at the runner on second base, and then somehow maybe throw the ball backwards. Uh, I don't know how he would pull that off with any accuracy, but, but just to make sure that he doesn't try to do something like that, uh, we have this rule that he must be facing the, the batter when he delivers the pitch. The next way is that if the pitcher uh, unnecessarily delays the game, And so, so again, we've looked at the, the one rule that says if there's nobody on base, then, then the, the pitcher has uh, 12 seconds uh, to release the ball to throw the next pitch. But 
that that rule only applies to the situation where there's nobody on base. So if if there is in fact a runner on base, uh, the the pitcher it doesn't give that same 12 second uh, time rule, but but it's it would also be at the umpire's discretion as to what is unnecessarily delaying the game. The next way is that the pitcher, uh, while giving an intentional base on balls, while let me say intentionally walking a batter, he pitches when the catcher is not in the catcher's box. So, during an intentional walk, the pitcher throws when the catcher is not in the catcher's box. And so, remember the catcher's box is, is the area behind home plate that I don't have uh, don't have drawn on, on this field, but, but it would be something, it would come back here like this, and, and so the, the catcher would, would have to stand or, or, or crouch down in that, that box, and, and so the reason this, this rule is put into play is, is because generally when we're, you uh, would intentionally walk a batter, the, the catcher will be standing up and so he'll actually uh, stand up and he'll he'll take a step to the side here say if, if the batter is, is right-handed so he would take a step outside and, and, and catch so basically we're saying that the, the catcher has to go back into the box and usually usually he will hold his hand out uh, to kind of give the pitcher some some uh, target there he has to to go back into each into the pit, the catcher's box uh, before each uh, new pitch. And the final way uh, that, that cited here uh, that a pitcher can commit a balk is if the pitcher is pitching from the set position and he does not come to a complete stop before he delivers uh, the pitch. So the pitcher does not come to a complete stop uh, pitching from the set position and and this is something that's also um, repeated in the the rule about uh, wind-ups legal wind-ups and so this is just uh, reinforcing that that the, that pitcher whenever he comes to the stop and he'll have the ball uh, in, in not only his throwing hand but and then inside his glove as well and and remember that he also he cannot uh, remove his hand from the ball or that would be a balk but he also he must actually come to a complete stop and then proceed with his pitching motion so those are uh, the different ways that a pitcher can commit a balk